Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So recently I got a requirement from a customer to create a some PO tracking uh, information on the purchase order inside Dynamics. Now we actually did that through programming inside Dynamics 365, but I thought it might be a good candidate to try and do through a Power App. I'm fairly new at Power Apps and want to learn more about them and learn how to do them better and, and that sort of thing. So I figured I'd blog about it as, as I go along and, and show you the different steps that I'm going through to create that Power App, okay? So the requirements on it were fairly simple. I'm, I'm keeping pretty much the same requirements the customer had. And, and basically the, the story is this, that the, the customer orders um, items from a manufacturer overseas in China, and those items get put on a ship, and that ship comes across over here to the U.S. So the customer periodically gets updates of where that ship is, you know, when it's left the port, when it, you know, where it's at, different, uh, different information as far as tracking. And the customer just wanted a place to put that information on the PO. So last time we talked about uh, how to embed a Power App into Dynamics 365. If you didn't see that, I'll go ahead and link that up here. Uh, so you can go and look at that as well. But that's we're eventually going to do that. But first, we need to actually build the app. So it's going to take a couple of videos to do this. Instead of making one huge video, um, I'm just going to try and break this up into, into pieces here. So the part we're going to do today is we're going to create the custom entity in the common data source to hold the information, hold the different tracking information. So you're going to see that this is fairly simple to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to make.powerops.com and I've already got environment loaded um, and then we're going to create the custom entity, okay? So let's switch over to the uh, computer and take a look. So if I come in here into the uh, make.powerops.com, I'm going to go over here to entities. And what I want to do is I want to create a new entity. And I'm going to call this uh, purchase order tracking. Okay, and so it's going to give it a name, and the primary field that I'm going to do is going to base this off of, my primary field is going to be uh, purchase order numbers. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type that in here, per, I'm going to do PO number, that's going to be my primary field, and then we'll go ahead and I'm going to click done. Now what this is going to do in the background, it's going to provision the table for us. Um, you're going to see here in a minute uh, several other fields are going to kind of populate. And these fields are other fields that you can use. You know, there's, you know, there's a created on, uh, modified on. These fields get created with, with every new entity, okay? So don't worry about that those are getting created. But while this is creating, we can actually go ahead and, and start adding our other fields here, okay? So let's go back to the, the computer here. As we see that the, the fields actually just got created. Um, these are, again, just all the ones that get created by default. So again, modified on, owner created on, um, you can use these if you want. And here is our primary field name that we created was called PO number. So that's in there now. All right, so to add a field, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on add a field. And then the first field that I'm gonna add is going to be, um, so once they send the PO number, I just I want, want them to give them the ability to enter a message to us. It's not going to be required. It's going to be an optional field. We're going to just add message there to it. Okay. The next field we'll add is we'll, we'll add a, um, a transportation status. Status. And this data type is going to be, let's make this one an, um, an option set here. We'll go ahead and choose that. And let's create a new option set. And let's just call this... Um, all right, we'll just leave it as transportation status, and we'll call this one at port, and let's say on the water, and I'll put um, at destination port. So we can obviously make these anything we want. I'm gonna make this one at uh, shipping, just to make, make a difference between those two. Okay. Um, and let's see, I've already got one there, so I'm just going to add a name to it. Um, or let's, let's change, it's saying I've already got, got an a option set called transportation status. Let's just call this one um, PO uh, status. Let's see if that one's been done. 
here. Let me do that one more time here. That feels like a name for us. PO status. Uh, PO status. There we go. All right. And so now I don't have a duplicate there, so that should be fine to go. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit, hit save there. And then the next one I want to add is actually, let me hit done on this one. I'm not going to make this one required either. Hit done there. And then the next two fields I'm going to add is going to be a latitude because uh, I want to know where they're at. And latitude is going to be a floating point number. Um, and we'll click done on that one. And then we'll add a field called longitude. And we'll make that a floating point as well. Okay. Now don't worry too much about the types. We can go change these later. Um, under certain certain circumstances, we can go change these later. But worst case, we have to we'll delete them, delete them, and add, add a new one there. So go ahead, done there. All right. So we've got our um, got our fields that we're going to do created. So the next thing we need to do, we do need to save this entity. So we're going to go ahead and hit save, and that's going to save the entity for us. And in this particular entity, um, if we look across the top here, we can have other definitions. I'm not going to create any relationships or business view, business rules under this particular one. Um, I do want to create a view, and I'll show you why that's important here in a minute. And the view that I'm going to just amend is this active purchase order trackings. So I'm going to click on that. And what I want to do is I'm just going to add these extra fields here. Um, so I'm going to create, add um, the message there after PO number, and I'm going to add the transportation status in there, and then I'm going to add the latitude and the longitude right there. So I'm just dragging and dropping those in there, and we'll go ahead and save that, and we'll publish that one there. Okay. So. Where we're going to see that come into play is when we actually add the data. So it's, this is going to be the grid that's going to show, and I'll, I'll point it out once we get to it there. So once we're done with that, we're going to go and go back. And the next thing we want to do is we're going to take a look at our forms. Now the main form is what's going to be used. We're going to add some data, and that's going to be the form that's going to use to, to actually add the data. So I'm going to amend this uh, main form here. We'll click on that. And we're going to kind of do the same thing we did a minute ago is I'm just going to, um, so our PO number is already there. I'm going to add our message and our transportation status. And I'm going to add our latitude and longitude. So again, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is the form we're going to use when we actually add, we'll actually add some data in here. And then this is the form that's going to be used. Okay. All right. So we're going to save there. And we'll go ahead and publish that. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. So we've got our entity ready to go. I'm not going to do any dashboards or charts. Don't need any keys. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some data to it. So I'm going to here, go here to data. There's no records found. I'm going to go ahead and hit add record. And this, what comes up here is the form that we created just a minute ago in the forms where we adjust that main form. So here in the PO number, I'm just going to put 0035. Message is going to be uh, items are at the port. Uh, transportation, I'm going to say at shipping port. And I'll just add some, I don't know, a latitude or anything, but we'll just add some numbers in here. There we go. Latitude and longitude. And we'll just save that. There we go. And if we go ahead and refresh this screen here, we now we see that we have some data in here. We have our items, our port, our PO number, et cetera, in here. Okay. So if we take a look at our view, I don't like the, the fact that my message is before my PO number. So if I come back here to view, uh, if I come back in here, see I've got my message here. So let me we'll slide that over here. There we go, and we'll save that, publish that again. And if we come back, take a look at our data again, now we have our PO number and it's in, in the right order. And really, you're not going to really use these views for anything except, in, in our case, we're, we're not really going to use them anything for, except for adding a little bit of example data, just mainly for our, our readability, okay? So that's where we're going to kind of wrap it up today. You know, we've created an entity. 
and to hold our data. The next video what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at actually creating the, the uh, app. We're going to use a Canvas app from scratch and basically build this thing from, from the ground up here. Okay. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found some value in how to create these custom entities here in, in the common data service. Uh, if you did, please give it a like or thumbs up and to keep seeing the videos that are going to come up, it's going to at least be three or four video series, maybe more. Um, feel free to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified when I upload a new video. Okay. So until next time, thanks for watching. See you later.